Hello Unity fans and welcome back to the series. After the last few videos, recursion now allows us to find the least amount of groundwork required to place a building in a particular spot on the map. And we have an automated task system to manage boulder actions. So we can now instruct our builders to actually perform that groundwork and then construct the required buildings. We would like this construction to happen progressively to fit in with the real-time nature of the game. Let's see how we can accomplish this. After determining the optimal groundwork configuration, we have a list containing references to a number of cells, specifying how many elevations each needs to be adjusted by, as well as whether the small randomness built into the height needs to be cancelled. Remember that we've added some randomness within the same elevation level to keep patches of ground from being absolutely flat. However, when a single building should overlap more than one hex, those hexes need to be forced to the exact same level ignoring the randomness. So we add one digging task on the center segment to our task queue if the randomness needs to be cancelled out and three digging tasks for each level that the hex needs to be raised or lowered by. We've limited this to one level for now but could easily handle two levels. This means that buildings will be constructed faster on flatter land while very uneven land may require more groundwork, taking more time to complete. In order to let the change in elevation occur gradually while the digging is taking place, we determine how many digging actions will be required in total on each hex. Then the digging animation triggers an event at a specific point in the animation, at which we play a sound. A group of digging cycles forms one digging action, at which point we create some dust, which will be destroyed after a few seconds, and adjust the elevation of the hex slightly. This step just calculates by how much the Y position needs to be adjusted and updates the cell's coordinates. Here you can see how the task queue handles these actions. If you want more detail on this, check out the video link in the top right. What's important for this video is the flatten hex method. It merely adjusts the elevation slightly each time a digging action completes and checks whether the hex has now been completely flattened. Note that we also need to change the Y position of each unit on the hex to prevent them from floating or disappearing into the ground. Once the hex has been flattened completely, the build tasks need to be activated. We'd like to keep other units off of the building site, so we add a large movement cost to it. You may have also noted how we change the texture of the digging and building sites to a dark brown temporarily. However, we don't want to activate the build tasks before all the hexes have been prepared. So whenever a hex has been flattened, we check all the hexes for that building and only activate the build tasks if all the digging has been done. While there are various constraints we have to keep in mind, we'd like to try to implement a somewhat realistic building process where builders visit various locations around the building site. The structures also need to be completed progressively, aligned with the builder's tasks. Now, for each type of building, the structures would be located at different coordinates on the ground. We would not be able to implement one fixed building cycle. In any case, we'd like some larger buildings to take longer to construct than smaller ones. So we need a way to parameterize the number of building locations the builders need to visit, and where exactly they should be situated. We also need to figure out how to integrate the different models of the building to be used for the different steps in the progressive construction process that you're witnessing here. And we need the different structures of a complex building to be managed independently, since one part could be progressing nicely while another is still waiting for builders to arrive. The solution I've implemented pulls everything together in the building prefab itself. It contains a game object for each hex that will contain some part of the building, ignoring where structures spill over onto other hexes. The name of the game object tells the script where it should be placed in relation to the base hex. Inside this game object are separate game objects for each stage of completion of the structure on that hex. Each of these stages contains the visuals for that stage of completion. I've had some help from the creative modeler in breaking down the buildings into stages of completion in Blender. He also has a channel where he builds real-life railroad and other scale models. 
so check it out if you're interested. The link is in the description. EchX also contains a number of build positions, which are placed at the locations where we want the builders to stand when hammering. We will shortly see how we convert these into build tasks. Finally, there is a game object called Center Position. The builders will turn to face this location before hammering, to prevent them from just hammering away in the direction that they arrived. So this is placed inside the structure. Now, when the flattening has been completed and it's time to place the build tasks into the queue, we load this entire model onto our map and into our building variables behind the scenes. We disable everything to keep it invisible for now. Now, for every hex with part of the structures on it, we first set the center location the builders need to face. Then we look for all the building locations and add them to a list of the building. Finally, we look for all the progressive steps and add them to a list of building models. Now, everything from our prefab has been transferred to our on-map set of models and into the behind-the-scenes variables and parameters. Next, we actually load the build tasks. Remember that each task needs to be allocated to a specific segment on the map. We convert the location of the game object that was specified in the model to a segment by first checking to which hex its position corresponds and then looping through the segments in that hex and finding the segment that is closest to it. In this way, we add a build task for each build position specified in the prefab model for that hex. The builders can now get going again. In the same way that the digging progressively flattened the hexes, the building actions progressively activate the building models. You can see the similarity in the code. The difference is that rather than adjust the elevation of the hex, we enable the next progressive step and discard the previous. As soon as only one step remains, we know it's the last step and we can activate this part of the building. As before, the building first checks whether all building parts have been completed before activation takes place, which at this time consists of merely allocating an idle unit to the building. A lot of work has gone into generalizing the processes covered in the last few videos. Luckily, this makes all future buildings much easier to implement, and like when we went from hex to segment in the unit movement, these processes will undoubtedly facilitate and support many future mechanics and extensions to the game. I conclude with one last important aspect in the construction process. You may have noticed that the builders still walk through the buildings when constructing the farm while they walk around the buildings properly while constructing the smaller buildings. This is because I haven't set the restrictions on movement for the farm yet. Before the construction process kicks off, we need to set the allowable paths and directions for each segment that forms a part of the construction. This needs to be carefully planned to ensure builders won't walk through partly constructed buildings. But it is also important to ensure that all build positions can be reached given the possible terrain elevation levels and enforced restrictions. For example, for the dwellings, I have not placed any build positions around the edges, since that would require us to apply restrictions to a second ring of the hexes to ensure builders would be able to reach those segments. As it stands, the dwellings could be right up against a cliff and the builders would still be able to construct it. However, these restrictions we place on movement can also trap units that are currently on hexes that would be cut off from the rest of the map. I still have to implement a good way of forcing them off the hexes before applying the restrictions. But more on that in a future episode. Please consider subscribing to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!